Oh, hi. Thanks for tuning in. It's the middle of June. Happy Pride. The celebration sure has evolved over the decades. It sees everyone now, even you. Yes, you. You are valid. If I had a pride flag that is unique to me, it would probably look really crazy. I'd say something like this. This year's celebration and festivities are looking very different, as leaders and organizers scramble to find different ways to reach fans and patrons to keep everyone as safe as they can. No leader wants people to get sick, or worse, get possibly sick with a fatal illness. Well, except for Trump, who plans on having his rally this weekend, right after Juneteenth, showing he hasn't learned a thing this year. What does Trump say about people who are protesting who want safety, change, or real police reform? He says, these aren't my voters. However, as the issues keep happening from police brutality to excessive force against black people, even as the protests are making headlines and the murders are still front and center, police are still killing black people who aren't posing a real threat. So Trump found himself needing to do something. So this week, he signed an executive order for real police reform. I'm just kidding, that was a joke. He started off good over in the Rose Garden, looking to spread a message of unity, and then follows it up with this. Americans want law and order. They demand law and order. They may not say it. They may not be talking about it, but that's what they want. Wow. Then he signed an executive order that he says bans chokeholds unless an officer's life is at risk. So that isn't a ban. It also encourages, not requires, local police departments to follow higher standards on use of force and to report misconduct to a national registry. So it'll be like an offender registry for police departments to share. If most of that sounds familiar, well, you aren't alone, because police already use chokeholds when they feel threatened, and apparently that's whenever a black person is around. The order doesn't require any standards to be met, it just encourages. Also, a national registry to make it harder for police with a bad history to bounce from department to department? You mean to tell me there were no reference checks done on transferring officers? So this seems like he did nothing but try to look important for the camera, showing off his signature. Yep. He also reinforced that he is opposed to calls to defend, dissolve, and dismantle. Wait, what? We oppose the radical and dangerous efforts to defend, dismantle, and dissolve our police departments. Pretty sure he meant defund. Best words indeed. His words are also misleading, and he knows people are not going to educate themselves on the issue. Defunding does not mean dismantling. In fact, many suburban communities do it already. It means to reduce the demands placed on police and shift taxpayer funding to mental health care, housing, and other social programs. Trump also said nothing about the racism issues in America as he sat to sign the order surrounded by nine decorated police officers, of which only one was black. Trump also still believes COVID-19 will still disappear, and Pence is downplaying the fact that over 20 states have seen an increase in cases. This is, of course, to prepare for the rally this weekend. Attendees will need to sign a waiver agreeing not to sue if they get COVID-19. Sounds safe. As states reopen into Phase 2 and Phase 3, a lot of communities that also had large events planned are now going virtual. My community, Furries, have also started doing this. For more, let's hop on the honeypot and check in with our new senior correspondent, Wolven Wolf. Hi, Wolven. Oh. Um. Wolven. Wolven. Hello. Oh. Wolven. Hi, Hila Hila. Hi, what are you doing? I'm at a rave. A rave? A, w a rave? Where are you? I'm at home. It's virtual. Is a rave fun that way? It's safe. Also, yes, surprisingly fun. Huh. Furries are taking their communities online. From online fur meets to virtual conventions. Virtual furry conventions? Yep. Conventions are taking place virtually, which means furs can use apps like Honeypop Pro and Lite to host a few dozen or thousands of users. Virtual reality chats allow furries to create avatars that look like their own original characters and do everything they would do on or offline. Even things like workshops and breakouts or panels? Yes! Users have used real-life floor plans to create a space with the same look and feel as the convention space would have. Doesn't that take a lot of money, though, to own VR equipment? Most of the VR platforms have the option for a 2D experience or an immersive 3D experience. 
All you need is a computer or a smartphone to get started. Wow, that actually sounds amazing and fun. Thanks for explaining that. It is! Oh, this is my jam. I gotta dance to this. Back to you, bear! Wolven Wolf, everyone. Thanks, Wolven. Let's get into the news so I too can go virtual later. Welcome to Barely a Bar's Woke 52 Week 24. I'm your dubstep DJ bear, Hila Hila. I have a set after the hamsters. Don't resist the dance. Police continue attacks on peaceful protesters and press using tanks and tear gas, causing defund the police to go viral. Trump causes anger with plans for rally the day after Juneteenth in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa is where the race riot of 1921 occurred, where mobs of white residents attacked a wealthy black community known as Black Wall Street. The American Red Cross declined to provide a death toll, but it is estimated approximately 300 people died and left more than 10,000 homeless. Trump's decision adds controversy to how he's handling nation nationwide protests against police brutality and racism. Coronavirus cases are on the rise as weather gets warmer. The virus does not seem to be slowing down. The Republican platform is back with all the hits from 2016, including rhetoric that slams the current president. The Confederacy falls again as statues go down. The UK economy shrank by 20% in April, a record decline that exposes the cost of nationwide lockdowns on the world's advanced economies. The Trump administration removes Obama-era health protections for transgender individuals, and the PlayStation 5 has been revealed. Boom, 52 seconds. Thank you for watching. If you like these news blasts, feel free to share or bear with your friends. You can also like, comment, subscribe, and click the notifications alert bell to stay woke 52 times a year in 52 seconds of news. Want more news with your favorite news bear? Feel free to stay to the end to watch some clips or images with me. Want to be a correspondent on the show? Message us in our Telegram chat at barely a bar for more information. Bye for now. So what brings us here? I've learned over the years, but particularly recently, that every black man in America apparently feels threatened when they're stopped by the cops. That it's not 99%, it's like 100%. I've talked to a lot of uh, African American pastors at home and in their churches when a young man gets able to drive or old enough to be considered a young man, they have a talk about what you do if you're stopped by the police. You keep your hands on the wheel, you don't reach for the uh, dash, you say yes sir, no sir. I think Senator Booker's mentioned that, Senator Scott said he's been stopped five or six times uh, on Capitol here, Hill. I've never been stopped. And when I see a cop behind me, the first thing I think about is what did I do wrong and can I talk myself out of this ticket? There's literally no fear. And I wouldn't like to live in a country where I'd be afraid to be stopped. So hopefully we can all understand that problem and fix it. But it is a problem. Every black man in America, virtually every black man in America, feels like if they get stopped by the cop, it's a traumatic experience.